So, you want to become a video editor. Before you fully start, there are a few things that you need to know. Firstly, you need to know that there is a lot of competition. People are starting to realise just how good video editing can be for your life. I mean, imagine telling someone 30 years ago that there are now jobs that allow you to work from wherever you want in the world, at whatever time you want, at whatever pace you want, all while making a huge amount of money. They just simply would not believe you. Even now, I still hear a lot of people tell me that video editing just isn't a proper job. Like, I'll tell them what I do, but then they'll just say to me, oh, that's a cool side hustle, but what are you actually gonna do in the future? Are you gonna get a degree or what? Little do they know that this is actually my real job, and it is a massive, massive, really well-paying job for a lot of people out there. But despite a lot of people not even knowing that video editing exists as a job, a lot of people are finding out about it and a lot of people really want the work where you want, when you want and how you want kind of lifestyle. And this has made it a lot harder for people to become video editors nowadays. This means that if you actually want to succeed as a video editor nowadays, you need to be able to do what most editors can't. This may mean that you need to learn a specific style or learn to become way faster than most other people at video editing. But whatever it is, you need to do what most people can't. Because to reach the top 1%, you need to be willing to do what the 99% won't. The second thing that you need to know if you want to become a video editor is that you need a website or portfolio. When I started video editing, for the first few years, I didn't have a portfolio or website. In fact, I just didn't have any examples of my work altogether. If you wanted to see how good I was at video editing, you'd have to be a detective to find out. Don't get me wrong, I had done work and I'd done a lot of it actually. I just for some reason wasn't showing it to people. I just didn't know that I actually needed a portfolio and that is why I'm telling you now. I would email and DM hundreds of people and I was confused why I'd only get a couple of them coming back to me with responses like, oh sorry man, I already have a video editor or oh man, sorry, I don't need a video editor. But now looking back at it, it's so obvious why they weren't actually replying to me. I literally had no portfolio or website, meaning that I was asking for their money without them actually seeing how good I was. I mean, these creators get hundreds of emails and DMs from people offering graphics design, video editing, all sorts of services. And if you don't have a portfolio and the people who are emailing them do have a portfolio, there's no reason for them to choose you over them. You just can't expect someone to give you money when they don't even know what they're paying for. And if you don't have a website or portfolio, you just can't really blame people when they just instantly bin your DMs. The last thing that you need to know is that your PC performance and video editing performance are a lot more linked than you think. I understand that not everyone has the budget to buy a 2023 MacBook Pro with 64 gigabytes of RAM, two terabytes of storage and a super GPU inside. I understand that some people can't afford a supercomputer with an i9, 9900K or whatever it is. I understand that some people are stuck with computers that they can't really afford to upgrade. However, the least you can do is at least maintain what you have. If that means getting a Google Drive subscription with 100 gigabytes of storage so then you can keep your computer organized and not fall to the brim with storage, which is what mine was for about two years straight, or at least just get some sort of exter external hard drive or at least optimize your computer for video editing. For example, you can dedicate more RAM to your video editing software because even though your laptop might say 16 gigabytes of RAM on it, your video editing software isn't going to be utilizing 100% of that. But if you have a really bad computer, you just can't afford to do that. You want to make sure that you utilize every gigabyte of RAM that you actually have. I'm going to show you how to dedicate more RAM to Premiere Pro. If you want to do it to DaVinci Resolve or After Effects, I think After Effects is the same thing actually, but if you want to do it to DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut, just search up on YouTube how to dedicate more RAM to X software but I'm going to show you now how to do it in Premiere Pro. So what you want to do is go up to preferences and select memory, then just decrease the RAM reserved for other platforms to as low as it can go. If you have a better computer with more RAM, like 16 or 64 or 32 gigabytes of RAM, maybe just allocate a bit more to other softwares because 
you don't really if you have a 64 gigabyte ram computer you don't really need 64 gigabytes of ram being allocated to premiere pro it just seems a bit overkill but if you have eight gigabytes you really do need every gigabyte on premiere pro or your editing software because eight gigabytes just isn't going to cut it just even on its own eight gigabytes is going to struggle quite a bit so the last thing you want is only four allocated to the editing software because then you're just not going to be able to do anything and this is when I'm really saying that your computer performance and your video editing performance are linked. Because if you have a really, really bad computer, you just feel so demotivated to edit and you, you physically just cannot edit at a fast and effective level. And you also physically, you sometimes you can't even use an effect. Like imagine trying to use an effect that your client has asked for, like a shake, and it, she says, no RAM left or something like that. That's literally what can happen if you don't have enough RAM. That's just the last thing you want. So make sure you can utilize every gigabyte of RAM that you have available. If your computer is really bad to the point where minor optimizations just aren't gonna cut it, I would recommend staying away from high tech, really fancy editing softwares. For example, Adobe After Effects because this, these softwares will absolutely kill your computer. If you want to know the best video editing method for a beginner, so you can start working effectively and at a high level in just a few weeks from starting, I would recommend that you watch this video here.